Forme Antiforme is an exhibition project that takes place in Milan as Brussels' contribution to the World Expo 2015. It is, in a way, a little provocative project in that it confronts the Milanese public with uh, um, a conflict between, on the one side, a beautiful object of design. Milan is, as everybody knows, the world's capital of design. And we will confront this object with a whole variety of anti-objects. Anti-forme, as the title suggests. Now today we're going to look into one particular case. It is dealing with one of Italy's most important contributions to the avant-garde of the 20th century and probably one of the most important artists of that century, uh, Lucio Fontana. As we all know, uh, Fontana produced throughout the 60s a series of works that are actually uh, monochrome canvases that are cut through by a knife. Um, it became a very uh, emblematic uh, contribution to the avant-garde and today uh, at many places in Italy where those works are uh, preserved, they are venerated almost as icons. Uh, Fontana is one of the great figures of 20th century Italian art. Now, what we wanted to obtain by getting back to the Fontana piece is the fact that the aggression of the cut, the iconoclastic action that Fontana made is almost forgotten. And we wanted to get back to that point. And in order to succeed in doing so, we asked a very gifted uh, filmmaker, Federica, to produce a little film in which we will see how a performer, artist, um, will put himself in the role of the artist Fontana, will uh, reconstruct uh, a painting, and will and finally destroy it with a knife. This little film is part of the exhibition. What we now want to do today is to put attention on another fact that if you, if you um, operate in the field of experimental curatorship, then you suddenly can discover some specific effects. Um, as a matter of fact, since we had a copy of the Fontana, we moved into a very volatile zone of um, uh, curatorial practice because on the one hand, we obviously made a fake. On the other hand, since we openly um, were showing the fact that we made the fake, we thought that we were not moving into illegality. Uh, that is one part of the story. So we have, at the one hand, the fake Fontana, at the other hand, the explanation why and how the fake Fontana came into being. Now, there is another aspect that we then can develop, what we never could do in a museum. Uh, Fontanas that are hanging in a collection will never move. Only uh, specialized people in the museum with gloves will try to move them or will move them if needed. In our case, we had a copy that was without any uh, market value, so we, can, we could try to experiment with them. And by doing so, we discovered something very interesting. So let us now perform an action that is impossible to imagine by reading a book, that is also impossible to to, um, to make into a museum space where a fontana, a real fontana piece should be. Um, here is our copy, it's hanging on the wall. It's, it's totally similar with a fontana piece in every regular museum where they hang. But what you cannot do is what I'm gonna perform now. I just take off the wall the painting, right? And I move it, and as I move it, the light is coming at the back of the painting and the cut is lighting up. It is an amazing experience because it, it is exactly what Fontana meant when he called this work Concetto Spaziale. Concetto Spaziale tells the story of an iconoclastic act, an act of destruction that led, in a way, to a transition from the two-dimensional painting into the three-dimensional space. And it's all about light. It's the light that's getting at the back of the painting and it's coming back through the cut. So this is something that's exceptional. Uh, nobody even thinks that it is possible. Fontana, of course, knew that this would be the 
essence of his piece, but how, how to tell it, how to, uh, to, to make that comment. Of course, the painting when it was made was most probably on, on an easel, so it was in the space, it was in a three-dimensional space. But it is a little experience, but it is very interesting to make as an art histo historian. And uh, I would also uh, underline the fact that this is an act of curatorship. Uh, making a fake is not the first time that we did. Uh, we did it in our exhibition in Beijing, Master Molding Cookie Room, and also there, the practice of uh, working with a copy as a possible strategy in art history and curatorship gave some very uh, interesting and exceptional uh, results. So, in a way, it is also underlying the fact that art historians, uh, while making exhibitions, can come uh, on an experimental way, a little bit as experimental archaeology did in the 60s to new and interesting experience.